here we are with John's Aria Pro 2 and look at this thing what a lovely hollow body guitar from the mm, what, 80s 90s maybe sounds like a million years ago but it isn't that old probably um, could be the 80s not much older but what a lovely looking thing big hollow bodied beastie some uh, art deco fitments um, wooden bridge I mean that's 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 made like a, a second world war aircraft propeller I mean what a thing of beauty that is even if you're not 100% convinced by the intonation on these sorts of things you've got to admit that's a that's a swoop of beauty um, so hmm well what I got well I've got this here in front of me and um, you know it's in pretty good nick all round but it probably could use first of all it's going to get a set of new strings that's for sure it's going to get some um, um, flat wound Thomas Thomastic uh, flat wound strings um, oops that's the first thing it's going to get but also I think we're going to give it a an adjustable nut and the reason why is because this thing will not stay in tune um, that's because it's got a crappy plastic nut so um, be interesting to see how well the uh, Tomastic strings go through here judging by the gaps on these um, things I'm pretty confident that will be just fine so I started out by making a note of where the bridge currently is I checked it for intonation last night um, and I'm going to uh, put the bridge back there when all is said and done now John mentioned something about I think about the um, sorry, Korean made this one. Um, mentioned something about the uh, pit guard holes, um, and I'm, I'll check my notes again. He said something about maybe filling those, um, whether he's keeping the pit guard off or not. Um, we can do such thing. It won't look a million dollars, but we can put some very dark paint in there mixed with a bit of dark sepia or something amber very dark amber and get some get that covered up so at least it won't stand out like that uh, but I'll, I will sort of check my notes and if anything I'll probably do that bit at home um, but let's get stuck into the setup on this so I'm gonna as normal head down this far end the far end let's get this nut taken care of right here right now Right here, right now. Oh, he just puts it down, sets up the camera, and then moves the guitar. What a brilliant piece of planning, young sir. Right. So, let us remove the truss rod cover. And I'll just do a quick check of the truss rod, or the neck relief, and then a, ch a check of the um, sort of overall action, and see what sort of improvements we can make. I mean, these guitars were never particularly meant to be, well, I don't suppose anybody ever intended them to be particularly low. I mean, this one's got quite a low first fret action, so, um, which is pretty low on, the, on all the way up, actually. So, um, having just done that, oh, let's change the nut over first while we're sort of looking in this direction. Otherwise, I've just set the thing up for no good reason. So what I'll do is just drop the springs off. There's a bit of creaking in the bridge going on here. Hopefully it will just stay in place and won't just disappear anywhere. Okay, well this nut very kindly um, comes free. Uh, yeah, plastic. Plastic. So we've got a nice slot to fit this nut back in. Now I can see while I'm at it I can show you the kind of fret wear that we've got on there. Um, not, not, not massive but a little bit. Well played. Uh, it's been leveled some time before. Um, you can see it's flat across the top on most of the strings. Um, and I wouldn't say that's particularly from playing because it's too even. Um, 
inlays a little, only a tiny fraction proud, like they've, um, you know, the woods shrunk a tiny bit over the years, which is highly likely, in fact. Um, let's just zoom out to here a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a couple of sanding, small sanding blocks up. And oh, first thing I'll do is I'm going to take my adjustable nut and I'm going to flatten out the grub screws. So I'll just use them to push the insert off the base, like so. Then I'm going to withdraw them back in until they're just only sticking through. And then I'm going to use the rougher stuff. I'm going to use this just to sand back to flat feet, basically. Um, and I just want to be able to spread the load of the weight a little bit more evenly, or fairly, on these two grub screw feet, just so that um, I'm not sort of pushing sharp plastic into the sorry, sharp metal into the 3D printed base. So it just gives it a little bit of extra chance of it staying nice and intact. So that's beautifully rounded off. So I can put those back in there like this. So now I'm going to concentrate on, you can't see it the second, but I'm just sizing it up. So it needs a little bit off the nut or this whole unit, if you like, to get it to fit inside the uh, nut shelf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit off the front face of this. And this is a good thing anyway, because it now renders the, the two sides flush to each other. Whereas before, there was just a little bit of overhang, a bit of excess on the 3D printed side. So this way it gives me the flushest possible finish between the two. That also takes it down a little tiny bit and starts to see whether it fits in. That's just again a fraction too big to fit in. So I'll just take a little bit now off the back side um, as well, just enough to smooth it out. Just trying to keep it equal, um, the amount I take off either side. There we go. So the thing that was interesting for me about playing this guitar last night was just how much I didn't want to play it. I mean, I played it the other night and I immediately liked the feel of it. So I kind of made a joke about falling in love with it um, there and then. But And that's true enough. Um, that's a perfect fit. Perfect fit. Now, I just think we may be a little bit high as default. So let's see how it looks in terms of first fret action. We may need to take a bit down off the bottom still. Um, we'll tighten, it, tighten it up and see what we get. Yes, so um, I, you know, I played it the other day briefly and, um, uh, and then I tried I had another go last night and actually I didn't enjoy it. Um, and the reason I didn't enjoy it is it just wouldn't stay in tune. Um, yeah, I wouldn't stand you and so so it wasn't pleasur pleasurable. And that's the whole thing for me about a guitar. And if it plays in tune, then it's 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 great. But if it doesn't play in tune, forget it. <laughs> um, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out. Whoa! Sorry. I'm sorry. My all the, all the akimbo. Now we're not recording. Now let's have a look at what we've got. So relief-wise, we've got yeah a reasonable amount of relief. Action wise, let's see what we've got. Two and two. So let's see if we can 
drop it down a bit, whoops, without it moving too far. Yeah, so that really brought it home to me, this thing that, you know, if, if it won't stay in tune, I just don't want to go near it. And I'm afraid it wouldn't stay in tune, so I didn't want to go near it. a fraction high so when, when I come to take this off a bit later I'll take a tiny bit off the base of this but as it stands uh, that's absolutely fine for now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into um, marking up the frets on this neck for a careful level and see if I can get rid of some of this um, what do you call it fret wear um, as well as recrown the frets into a nice fret shape um, better than it currently is because they're a bit flattened off. Um, uh, now the, the question of the bridge, um, of whether it's, uh, you know, you should replace, inverted commas, should or shouldn't replace a bridge like this. I don't have any problem with uh, a bridge like this. In a sense it's pre-compensated, but it's not it's not exactly very well pre-compensated. Also the strings uh, have kind of wandered a bit off position. I might have to make a, a slightly new slot there. Um, but generally speaking, it's uh, they, they do intonate pretty well. There is, there is a sort of, there's one place where it doesn't quite work and, and there's a compromise in that one, one note has to um, stay a slightly bit out of intonation for the whole thing to work um, but and it, it depends where which note it is depends on uh, whether you've got a wound G a wound G or a plain G but in this case of this plain G set here um, it, it, the line is a straight line where in fact and that's the same in a way you could say as when um, you know Gibson's used to have their wraparound bridges using utilizing just what look, I suppose was ordinary stop bars um, just doing doing the job with no pre-compensation on them um, and this in, in a way is a bit like that it just goes all the way across in a in a straight line um, it doesn't really need because the, the line itself is slanted across the saddle um, it doesn't actually require the bridge itself to be slanted on the top of the body which is okay it still looks okay either way, which way there because I'll need them to reduce the nut slightly. Um, like I say there, there is a, a little bit of relief in this but it doesn't feel like too much. It's up the upper end, upper limit of what I would have but then again this is a, um, and this is very definitely uh, a jazzy style guitar. Um, now with these flat wound strings, I take it the I'm looking at this 14, 18, is the G wound or is it plain? 18 to 23. I don't know. Maybe they're no they're not all wound, are they? Okay, so let's just let's get going. Let's get the tool of the trade. The box of the box. And get going. 
this be a Saturday night. And it's the Saturday night, shortly after. That young lad in the United States was acquitted of all charges, which I thought was just a, all round a, a interesting and I mean the whole thing was troubling. I'm not. I think one of the things that always troubles me is how these things are set up to be polarised, or how they're seized on and used as polarising devices. So it seems to be all that anyone really cares about is to sort of get yeah sort of line behind one polarized camp or the other which which just seems really unfortunate it's like we've it's like that's obviously that's the seems like the social media way because it creates controversy and argument um which equals clicks and money sadly um and that seems like Seems like all that um, all that we can expect these days. But I mean, that, so that's one of my first regrets about it is that you know, as as a lot of these things do, it doesn't seem that they permit any nuance in opinion. So, and, and of course, for me, I always find myself um, having at least some sense of both sides of an argument or multiple sides of an argument or or an event or a perspective um you know so i i, I can listen to I listen to listen to so called extreme polarized camps and agree to some extent with with both so i'm concerned about people you know, I, I'm, I'm concerned about people running around having shot someone and then uh, when other people try to stop you ostensibly from killing someone else, then the law permits you to feel threatened even though you've already killed someone and then you can, from that point effectively, you can kill more because at each stage you can say... Yes, yes, I know the cops were trying to stop me, or the citizens were trying to stop me because they thought I was a, an active shooter or whatever. Um, but I feared for my life, so... Well, the weapon I was holding happened to be a weapon I'd already used to kill someone. My argument is that I'd killed them in self-defense as well, and therefore, if, if throughout the whole sequence, every time somebody, until the end of play, Every time somebody comes up and tries to stop me, other than perhaps the police, uh, I seem to be allowed, permitted to feel afraid, and if they come near me, I, I, I can kill them. Which seems completely... Uh, it's, uh, it's almost a completely untenable position. And yet, on the other hand, if... If, as it appears, he wasn't breaking a law, having that weapon in that place at that time, no matter how inadvisable it may have been, if he wasn't breaking the law, um, and if he felt he was under threat from a, a guy who was, was known or had a record of mental instability and who was running at him threateningly in the first place. Um, you know, if he hadn't broken a law and he felt threatened, then presumably he's allowed to use that weapon to protect himself. And, and if that's what the Constitution says, then that is how it has to be, whether we like it or not, um, in which case technically, or the law, by by law, then yes, he's not guilty of a premeditated murder, if we can describe it as that. So it's a, it's one of those situations where I can absolutely see both. I can see 
complete insanity of having 17 year olds running around with M16, right? I said, I said F18, no, I don't know what I said last time. AR15s, I said M18s, M16s, but they're not, they're AR15s. I, I don't know and I don't really care. But, you know, to, to have people run around with such dangerous weapons at age 17 and, and to cross deliberately into a, a danger zone, a riot zone, um, on a self-appointed mission of what do they call them? Militia vigilante. Yeah, to, to cross over and do that. Ooh, I mean, hellfire. That's not a good. Um, sorry, what am I doing? I need to do recalibrate. It's just. I don't know, it's just uh, whether it's legal or not, that's just insanity, you know. And I think for me that, that you know, I, I, I listened deliberately to, deliberately, I listened to, um, uh, what's his face, Tucker Carlson. Now, you know, in some ways the man's kind of, sort of, it, seems, it strikes me as a kind of, Strangely angry, beetle-browed. No, I don't know what the word is. You know, he seems like an odd guy. He's not my kind of guy. But I've often heard him say things which I get. I get the argument. You know, um, and I can see the I can see the argument from that side. Uh, and he made an argument when I watched something the other day that pointed out that whilst everybody was claiming that. Um, you know, it was illegal for the fella, the young kid, to to be carrying this weapon that night. Um, he put, he made a, well, pointed out, and and uh, he pointed out the following that it wasn't illegal, in fact, and that they showed a clip from the judge's ruling where the judge had the prosecution admit that it wasn't um, illegal and, and at that point the judge threw out the firearms charge, a separate firearms charge possession or whatever, um, which which goes to stand up that it's not illegal then if the judge threw out the charge based on that. So, you know, um, Tucker Carlson was pointing out that the, you know, one side of the media, aside. One part of the media would would have you believe that it was illegal and that you know he crossed over illegally holding this weapon, which is actually fundamental to the whole thing. Um, uh, and yet, the, apparently, the facts are that it wasn't. Um, and I just think, yes, that has to be pointed out. If that's the actual truth, I don't care which side it comes from, inverted commas side. You know, we must must put it out there as fact if it's the if it's the truth. And uh, you know, and what's what's amazing is that you know it, the truth becomes this political thing. You know, where, where people will withhold facts and truths for their their political or their ideological ends, you know, whilst claiming a sort of a moral high ground, a type of ethical high ground, you know, it's just a, it's a worrying thing. Okay, so that's that done. These strings are going to get retired forever, permanently retired. Um, 
The reason, that, by the way, this nut works well in this situation is because it's a, although it's a, it's a three aside, and the original nut was three, was six in a straight line. Um, this is actually a little bit more accurate in a way because it's um, the slots. Well, it helps the slots push push off sideways. Although I have argued in the past, and I, I would still stick to my point that actually that doesn't really make much of a difference. It doesn't really matter where the string has to change direction. It has to change direction somewhere and actually all these slot slanted slots in this nut do is just change the place where it um, makes its turn from the front of the nut to the back of the nut. Whereas on the standard plastic nut there, I'm going to sneeze, it uh, changes direction right at the front. <coughs> uh, pardon me, would you? Um, so, really, you're, you're not, you know, the idea that having slanted slots on your nut really changes the whole game isn't the case. But uh, uh, these just happen to be slanted because that's how GraphTech decided to make them. Um, and they seem to work absolutely fine with guitars that were previously straight through strings um, because these actually do turn a slight direction anyway. So, so I'm just going to get these off. All right. Okie dokie. Um, I think I'll chuck. Actually, will I chuck them? Well, it's always good to have some sort of sacrificial sets. I've got a few around. The truth is, I never quite get around to using them, no matter how many I hang up somewhere. <sighs> okay, so now I'm going to remove this again, take down a little bit on the bottom of this. Um, this is a number three. I don't know how much you can see there. need to take a fraction of a millimeter off here altogether. Half a mil would be more than enough. And as always with sanding the bottom of a nut, we, we want it to remain perpendicular to the, to the front and back wall, if you like. Um, we just so you have to keep check of that, and if you find you're wandering off target, then you have to um, kind of correct it as you go along. It's, it's quite difficult to keep your eye on it. I'm just going to check this thing here. Yeah, there's a bit of a, a, bit of a sticky up bump here, which is think sort of tries to want to make the nut no it's not too bad I thought it was rocking it but it's okay right a bit more off the bottom here it's quite difficult to sand this material Good and square. Right, let's have a look. Where's the thing? Just gonna take the top off this for a second and then have a look. <laughs> Make sure we haven't gone through the bottom layer. Which seems just about okay. The uh, printed, 3D print thing does some quite odd things. The way it prints in sort of layers and 
it's like balls of wool it spools kind of layers of stuff up so you can start sanding and you come to strange patterns on the underside which make you think you're you're about to go through the bottom but you're not you've just gone through one thin layer of the, the way the nut works it's kind of weird okay so i think that's going to be as much as i take off here i'm just um looking down the front of here and i th feels like the end of this uh, neck the end of the fingerboard is actually cut just slightly off to one side but i think the slot itself is dead straight which fixes it so that's a good thing it's not uncommon to find strange little thing quirks like that and you know we assume that the edge of the fingerboard is the end of the fingerboard is always going to be dead square but quite often people make mistakes and it's a, a little bit one way or another okay so now i'm going to re-crown the frets um, yeah, so the, the kind of whole thing about the case I was referring to without mentioning names. Um, I just, I, I'm left with, I'm left with sadness that the, that the situation could come about like that in the first place. Place, you know, I don't, I don't care what the laws are in any country. You know, it's entirely up to them to make them, make you make them what you want. But I'm just, I've, the thought of a 17 year old kid being free to walk the streets of my cities in my country with with a riot brewing in the background um, and to, to, for that 17 year old kid to go into in, in quote unquote harm's way with so little life experience you know and, and with such a dangerous potentially lethal weapon in such a high tensile high octane situation i just think that's a tragedy and you know i you know i i totally get that some people will argue for why that should be the case because you know that means it protects everybody's right to bear arms or whatever i don't want i don't like being in that world but uh if, if that's what a, a nation truly wants then it's not for me to tell them no uh, but i'm i'm just i don't think it's terribly sad that a 17 year old child can be roaming the streets playing salvation a uh, savior you know savior games if you like playing law law lawman games with a lethal weapon you know, which which he then unfortunately for whatever set of circumstances which he then ends up using and which takes the takes the lives of two people and causes misery and suffering to a third and I just you know I don't really there goes the bridge um, there goes my uh, file I just don't know you know how you fix it really that kind of thing uh, you know particularly if, if a country still wants to carry on having those liberties in that sort of way that's that's I guess it's, it's everybody's choice and uh, you know, I think the other thing I'm sorry about, also very sorry about, is how quickly a tragedy like this, you know, and I feel sorry for everybody involved, including the little young man, you know, um, I, but I, th I feel very sad that this tragedy gets used as material to further distance people from each other. And to, you know, to encourage people to fall further and further into disparate camps so they can be further and further away from a consensus or any shared understanding. You know, and you might not surprise, be surprised to hear me say that I think the, the thing that actually lies behind the ability to 
to do something as dangerous as that young man did and then to end up pulling a trigger and to actually show almost no signs of being psychically or emotionally disturbed about having taken two lives and ruined a third. Um, that distance from empathy, that separation from empathy, I think is the root of why he was able to do what he did. And it's, it's, being, it's being fostered and grown at pace by this polarizing into camps business that everybody is so keen to do and the social media platforms are so immorally or amorally pandering to it, you know, while the, the money makers pander to the lowest common denominator and the social media companies do and they all make money and then kids like that young man actually have no, have no deep, em uh, not enough empathy to understand how it might feel to do that to somebody else or can't even connect with it in any meaningful way that shows in their demeanor after it's happened it, you know that's god we are that that's they're all tied up in the same thing you know the playing of the games the endless shooting people online and you know the argument people say oh but i can tell the difference between that and real life and that's that's a superficial and a trite rebuttal nobody says you don't know what the difference between real life is or isn't what people like me would be saying is that actually there is a, a real um, acclimatization I also don't know what the word is you know when you get you become desensitization there's a real desensitization um, that occurs um, while people are playing games and constantly shooting each other all the time. Um, you know, I, I watched a thing on YouTube earlier um, about just some British farmers uh, killing rats in their farmyard. So they all got together with their their terriers or whatever, and they've got a tractor and they're moving bales of hay with a forklift thing, and uh, thousands of rats are scurrying out, and they're setting their dogs on them, and the dogs are shaking them to death by the by the hundreds almost. I think they killed about 250 in in a single day. Um, but what was you know? And I here listen. I I, I get the you know, rats uh, eat the farmer's produce, etc., etc. Or rats are <coughs> may do X, Y, or Z. Um, but it, what what disturbed me is not seeing animals having to be killed to control pests. What disturbed me was watching how much fun the farmers were having with their dogs. And there's no, there's absolutely no mistaking the gleeful sort of running around, flushing out the rats, watching as the, you know, cheering and whooping as the dogs rip them, shake them to pieces and break their necks. And I, I get it, you know, farmers will go, that's a hu pretty humane way of doing it. La, 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 la. How else would you do it? You, you, you snowflake. That's not the point, right? I totally get the argument that you could convince me that rats have to be, um, destroyed if they are a threat to livestock and crops and so on and so on. My, my concern is how somebody engages in the killing of creatures without any, um, you know, without any feelings. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's fun. Um, and that, that's what bothers me. It's enjoyable, and you, for me, you have to be 
certain kind of person to enjoy killing other creatures, um, other animals. And I'm not one of those people. I, I never really was. I tried when, it, when, it, when I went fishing yeah, as a younger man. Um, and I no doubt killed my fair share of fish gasping away on the bank or wherever or foul hooked but it just came a point in my life where I just didn't want to do it anymore there's, there's no pleasure in killing something for me to watching life stop and actually call me I know you know hunting fraternity would think I'm just a complete pussy you know but watching watching a any animal's life stop um, bugs me. Um, full stop. Period, as they say. Just don't. I don't think I, I, there's no pleasure in it. Um, and I, I guess what I'm saying about the the young man in question, um, it it was evident looking at him that he was excited and pleased to be out there with his weapon doing the good Samaritan thing he thought he was doing. W whatever his motivation, I, I think it was I think it was highly tied up with his sense of being special with this weapon, you know, the, the ego, the elevation of the ego that the weapon gave him to be to be somebody who was uh, special and out there helping people in a special way, making him distinct from others because he's got this powerful weapon dangling from him. You know, the idea that you're holding a weapon to supposedly, you're going there because you want to help protect property. That was the first kind of argument. And you want to help in protecting property, you fear that you may become subject of attack. So therefore, you arm yourself with an uh, assault rifle. Uh, and then you get attacked and you use your assault rifle. And, and that's that. Um, the rest is history. Uh, but you know that that's the whole ego thing you know all of that is ego there's nothing actually um, good Samaritan about it and none of that's really talked about well, I heard none of that talked about in this case it was just about you're right he's wrong you're right you're you're a you know snowflake you're a left liberal lefty you're a Republican you know yee whatever, white supremacist, you're a this, you're a that. It's just everybody damning everybody else's view with their egos running riot. The same ego that cost those people their lives that night. You know, same ego as I was talking about the other night when I see those police audits and the police are utterly out of control, insisting on their, their so-called right to impose on people their will, even though there's no law to back it up. And when people challenge that, they cannot stand it. Um, they go crazy. But, so that's why I'm sad about the outcome of that thing, I'm afraid. Such a shame. I mean, but, you know, and I, like I said, I see both sides, I can see both sides of the argument. You know, I, I, if, if you have a constitution that permits you to do something, etc., etc. Then I get it that that should be absolute. And if it's wrong, or if it permits stupid and dangerous things to happen, then you then you rethink it and you rewrite it effectively. Um, but while it's the case, you uphold it, you know. And if it's absurd and if it allows a young man to do something as as crazy and as dangerous as that, well, you you know that's how it is until you. Maybe you, you as a nation or whatever, rethink it and decide that's not what you, what you don't want anymore. But um, it's just such a shame about the, the polarization that this gave rise to and how quickly you see the people who are polarized lose any respect for the humanity of the people they disagree with. That's the danger of the polarization. There's no compassion. They lose compassion. They lose any connection between them and the humanity 
their own humanity and the humanity of the people they disagree with gone you know and they, and they so they start sending death threats and they they start you know the, the the number of jokes going by on the comments jokes i put it in inverted commas jokes about vaporized bait bicep that man you know yes he was probably a you know uh less than perfect wishy-washy you know um lefty whatever you're not and all those things somebody probably wants to shut up and stop people saying things because other people will get triggered and all the things that just are unworkable and fit into that category it's probably all of those things um you know and lots more besides and lots of positive things too um but first and foremost he's a human being like the, the young man in the dock who was in the dock and nothing in all of this rebuilt any connection between those people and each other or those people those people's supporters and the supporters of the other side and that's the tragedy of it is that this turns into sides and then the sides forget the humanity of the other people and it's just more dangerous just continues just gets worse and then they go out and they have marches and then they can shoot people more easily because they don't see them as, as human beings. They see them as I don't know, social justice warriors with things in their ears who like to burn people's property and have no respect for the flag or whatever the hell. That boy's picture in his head of those people protesting or stroke vandalism, doing, you know, looting or whatever whatever they were doing at that moment in time, he has a prejudice, a pre-fixed opinion of what they are and what they're worth. And that's what killed them, not, not the weapon. And that's what, that's what I find the saddest thing of all. That we've nothing, nothing improved as a result of that trial. And no, no one learned anything things I just spoken about there weren't talked about or examined or lamented they just went through the evidence and upheld a principle um, which now arguably will cause a whole ton more trouble in future or at worst, it will cause more trouble when somebody else emulates that, knowing that they can probably get away with it. But at best, even if they don't do that, you know, it will just continue to be remembered as the, the divide between this group and that group. Such a damn shame. Anyway, probably YouTube probably classifies that discussion as something that about traumatic world events or some sh such stuff that it doesn't like in its advertising in, in ecosystem um, but hellfire turf you know i'm not i'm not ashamed of having a, a view on things and ultimately i don't care enough about YouTube's um, hundred maximum hundred dollars a month I get from their advertising. I can survive quite well without that. Should the need arise. So if they should so decide that I've transgressed, then so be it. But that is the biggest problem we face on this world at the moment, is this, the, the othering that happens in polarised argument and the ego sense of rightness that, that, that ultimately separates us so much from our shared common humanity that we 
actually, I would argue that we can actually end up going into a place like that with a weapon because our ego is so buzzed up on it and that we can end up having been so afraid that we shot and killed human beings and, and our egos can be so damaged that even after that we, uh, we could show absolutely no genuine human remorse. You know, there, there were times in that event, shall we call it, where the young man was seen to go into this blubbing fit now and then, um, you know, and everyone said, oh, look, he's, he's suffering, you know, his, his emotions are, you know, I, I've known, I've been around people for a long time, and I, I didn't see one moment in that young man's time, in the whole of that time, where the enormity, or where he felt any sense of enormity in the having taken human life. There wasn't a single reflection in his words or in his demeanour that, that it troubled him, actually, to have taken life. You know, I know he was fighting for his liberty and all of that stuff, but even if I was fighting for my liberty, the fact that I had taken two lives and ruined another one would be overwhelming for me. You know why? Because I see people as myself. I am human, they are human like me, even when I completely disagree with everything they do or believe in or seem to stand for. I am still connected by a sense of shared humanity until such times as they perhaps, you know, come the Second World War and they demonstrate that they don't have even that. They don't, you know, they don't even have any shared humanity with me. And maybe that's slightly different. But to decide that because somebody has a different view to you or because somebody even wants to use... Uh, race riots as an excuse to nick, uh, steal, sorry, nick, steal a couple of hi-fis or, you know, phones or whatever, that that, you know, f finding a, finding, when, when the American troops, when they came in to discover, um, uh, who, who discovered it? it, was the Americans and Belson, um, I know the British were there as well, um, but when the troops discovered the Nazi concentration camps, uh, and executed some of them, some of the camp uh, guards, out of hand. Um, you know, yes, they they had put aside their common humanity and and uh, executed these people. But that that's quite substantially different from not seeing people as humans because they just follow a different political candidate to you or they, they support, support Black Lives Matter but you think that's a, I don't know, a, a cultural Marxist thing or whatever, you know. Um, to, to, to lose the awe and respect for their lives. You know, people, like people said, if you respected human life you'd carry on running but you've got a gun in your hand and that tells you that you can do what you can do. And your lack of common humanity, lack of shared humanity, permits you to pull the trigger. I, would, I wouldn't be in that situation in the first place. And if I was, um, I would run from that person. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be shooting them dead. Because you'd have to live with that forever. Anyway... Um, yeah, so just a, a very odd week that's been in watching that, um, and I just do. I hope I hope the young man can do something with his life uh, that, that improves the world a bit. I'm not hugely optimistic, though. I have to say, I don't think this is a good start. You know, I think he's going to find himself sort of center of movements, you know, some who think 
you know, he's the ch hero or the champion of smacking down those cultural lefties, whatever they call them. You know, I, I just I wish for him that he would have some maturity and you know get some, get a chance to grow and stay away from that sort of stuff. That's what I would want for him. Not that he cares. He doesn't know me from Adam. Okay, I'm going to go off and polish these out. Um, and I'm genuinely looking forward to having a look at these babies. This thing these days of putting everything in these plastic things that almost guarantee you're going to cut your hands and be taken to hospital. Except they open, that one opens up pretty easily. Okay, plain steel, plain steel, 18 is wound. So that's a wound G which will behave differently from the plain ones. And this this here doesn't cater for a wound G. It doesn't cater for a transition between the wounds and the um, the wounds and the planes anyway, because it's a straight line affair. So it's going to be so-so. Anyway, right, I'm going to go off and polish this out and then come back when it's time to restring and see where we go. Okay, there we are. Back after coffee and polishing out the nice shiny frets. So now all ready to put on the Tomastic things, strings. We'll put this down this end. Yes, so, you know, tragic events in the world. It's a shame. It's a real shame. I, I'm, I'm very glad we live where we do. I feel very privileged that it's safe um, and that it remains safe. And long may it remain safe. Of course, there's a sense that it won't always be safe. You know, it feels like everything's changing towards a less safe, more crime-riddled world. But maybe it isn't. Maybe that's just a... Maybe that's just how it kind of looks sometimes. Right, I'm going to start by fitting the G. And um, we've got nicely wound bits at each end. It looks pretty cool. Except, <laughs> I hate to do this, but I'm unlikely to use all of this string. In fact, I'm not going to. So bad luck. We'll pull back. A fret's worth and we won't use the superb looking red lead on string um, it's a shame because it looks pretty cool um, and I'm not going to put it on there idiot you're in the wrong place aren't you <laughs> you idiot you said G didn't you do oh, sorry about that let's just get this on here so it doesn't fall off yes the G Come on now. So I still don't think still don't think it's going to store the red. Is it going to get the red on? Oh yeah, we will actually get the red on there. Some of the red on there. Let's try and get this done up before the uh, it un comes undone at the other end. It only actually winds a little bit of the red on, but it still looks pretty cool. I'm just going to make sure it is in place and I'm going to place back the bridge. Um, now, it might be a smart move at this point in the game to switch the bridge round because the big, the high strings, they, they'll sit in these slots just fine. Um, we need to make some new slots or allow the strings to create some new slots where it's worn away on the high strings so that looks is that been cracked it looks like the bridge might even be slightly cracked anyway i'm gonna we'll go with it this way it doesn't matter changing it around it does the same thing whichever way you go so i'm going to go with start with uh, it back to front and we'll basically allow 
cut very slight new uh, notches down at the bridge end. I'll come back to that. I'll show you what I do. So pull back one string's worth, wind it on, hold tight so it doesn't come undone the other end. Okay. So currently I'm just going to bring up the bridge because it's currently too low. Right. Now we're going to go with 14 the G. Beautiful gold looking thing. Mm, nice. Difficult to get the string on to get it pulled back and get the right amount without it um, falling out. I'll try. Yeah, maybe in there. Yep. Yeah. Oh, So the way I put these on is I pull the string all the way through first and then pull it back by one fret's worth and then wind that one fret's worth on um, and I let the string go first. I, I'll show you now. I do the held string. Do I do it under or over? I can't remember. Let's put this through here first, and then we'll get it in on this end, hopefully stay in place, and I come through all the way to the, pull it straight through, and then I pull it back one fret's worth, hold it there, wind it on, and I let the, I hold, I let the held string go over the loose string, but for this I've got to put this back in here now because it's come apart, come away. So held string over the loose string first time and then as it comes round push the held string under the loose string this time and let the loose string go over the top and sometimes it helps to just pull it up like that and then keep on going until it's nicely tensioned then we're on to the 23 oh, I've got the wrong string in the wrong place idiot managed to put the A string on the because I took them all out in one go. Okay, well that's okay because this at least the the crimped bit will be onto the uh, it'll be hidden or it'll be passed. We won't be using it. It'll go further through just as well. Oh. A string. Okay, pull back a fret. Put it over first of all. And then under the second time. And for the G. I tried, I tried. Hold it, attach it to the little catch, pull it back one fret's worth, start going, hold it over the loose one. Before it tightens up, fix it again at the end because it's invariably will have dropped out, which it has. Can't get it to stay. Thank you. Stay. Hold it tight. Get all the other strings out of the way as she can. And then this time under the loose string as it goes around. 
think I'll just cut some of these excess bits off because they're really getting in the way. Okay, and finally, a low E. I keep thinking to myself that I'll get a set of these for me. I don't know which guitar it would work with, but I, I love the feel of them. They're gorgeous, they're like I don't know, slow worms of guitar strings. Right, it's, it's almost a shame to cut them, they feel so beautifully made. Yeah, reptilian or something, maybe. So, here I have the strings whoops, fitted. Now, I don't really know the performance of these in terms of how they stretch out. So, just going to have to be a little bit careful. I'm going to have to be careful. So, let me just um, zoom out. Like Zoom out to about there. Just tune them up first. Now, before I do any more, what I want to do is check my position of the bridge, check whether the um, strings are sort of tending to sit, because I think we're going to need to just make an adjustment. But before it gets too tight, I do also want to um, check the height, the action height. So get that done while the, the bridge isn't under too much tension. Then I will fit a small, do some notches in the end. 1.5, 1.5. Two. Now, here we come to this point. Spacing is good, spacing is good, spacing is bad. So we've got to make a bit of extra spacing here because it wasn't right before. It is right now. Yeah, it's almost right. to do. The others are in the correct place. So um, I'm going to get me a one of these, one of those, hard to reach, a 17 and a 10. What do we need here? We need 28, 26. It's not bad. So I can see, yeah, so let me take you down this end and show you what we are looking at, if I can show you it close up. Hmm. Stay there, as long as I don't move anything, we should be all right. Okay, so these strings um, need to sit, oh, where do they need to sit? I've lost it already. Hmm. Right, that one needs to sit there, and this one needs to sit there. And I'm trying to mark the, uh, either side of it, but it's very difficult to make a mark. It just doesn't seem to leave any mark at all. So, um, I think I'll use a 26 for this one. And see where that has to go. 26 is this one here. Let's double check that. Yep. There's my start point. Good, good. And I'm going to use the uh, next one down. <coughs> the trouble with using magnets, sometimes they just don't want to let go. 
Um, what am I looking for? 26. Um, actually, that should have been. We'll go with 36 here. There you go. Then we'll use the 26 here. Now I've got to get this in exactly the right place. This isn't there. Where is it? It's there. It's already made a mark, hasn't it? Tiny amount of thing uh, cutting a thingy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Notch. Good. Now these may still actually feel like they want to intonate in a different way because they are different strings. Uh, whoops. Stay there. Thank you. again. That is a bit on the low side, so I shall um, attempt to bring this up a tiny bit. A bit more. Right, um, let's just check first fret action is very low because we haven't dialed it up, but that's okay. And we'll put it just into contact, we'll get it up a little tiny bit. That's nice, nice. If I remember rightly, these flat wires stay, hold their tune better.
good. That's good. Happy with that. Um, I'm going to take it home. I'm going to check with John about the, the fill filling of the screw holes for the um, pit guard, um, and then I'll bring home some stuff. <sighs> do it at home. Got the positioning back correctly from these strings, which is good. Um, before that was off, uh, so now it's as low as you like. Beautiful. Hurrah! Back in its box, going home, plastic nut, going in the bin. Horrible thing. Nobody will want that. I promise you. Okay, thanks for watching on this Saturday night. Might actually get this one out fairly soon, um, considering how uh, I've caught up with my other videos, which is pretty good. Um, but I've got busy few weeks still <laughs> more busy uh, few weeks coming up with I'm um, going up to Swindon on Tuesday to pick up some guitars from uh, XTC guitarist uh, sorry singer and guitarist um, Andy Partridge frontman and his studio producer friend Stu, uh, Stu Rowe who I haven't met but I shall meet this week um, yeah, pick up some guitars for the two of them and bring them back to work on. Um, and alongside all of that, I've got to uh, complete or get get complete get going full production mode with um, Nick's headless build and Vince's ultra ultra wide. Um, I, I'm going to try and organise a conversation with Vince to make sure we're exactly on the right track because. The size of the width of this thing I'm going to make is so huge that it, it's almost frightening. Um, so I've really got to make sure that we're, we're, it is the solution to his problems. Um, and partly that, that kind of checking, second guess, no, uh, double checking, um, it was courtesy of, of Ian, whose telly I did the other day. Um, and Ian also has very big hands and his uh, advice was to me was to really double triple check with um, Vince to make sure that what he really did need was the extra width and not um, not some height um, because that's what works for Ian even though he has huge hands huge fingers he doesn't need any more width but he finds having a higher action makes it completely playable so before we go and make a completely insane giant guitar let's just make triple sure I've done my best already to make sure it's the right thing to do but we'll triple quadruple check um, so okay <laughs> Okay, there we have it. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.